address you with the net. So this is Hong Kong. So we are uh, our peninsular and a we are we have a Hong Kong island though. So there's a Victoria Harbor uh, separating the peninsula and the island there. So spectacular sea views, uh, high scrappers, and, and let me show you New York. Actually, it's pretty similar. This is New York. And just like New York, Hong Kong is an intro, uh, international and uh, metropolis and Asia's financial hub. This is a city where English is one of the official languages and you have no problem ordering food, getting about with English. You do not need to speak Chinese, but it will not harm if you learn a few useful phrases there. Just to add a little note, which parents would be particularly interested, um, Hong Kong is one of the safest cities in the whole world with very low crime rates. So it's very safe to send your um, child to Hong Kong now. Now, Hong Kong is in the Far East and Turkey and Hong Kong are in many ways actually very similar. Turkey lies both in Europe and Asia, and um, where the West meets the East. Hong Kong is very similar. With 150 years of history, colonial history, the city is a mixture of colonial British and traditional Chinese, and it blends very well there. Hong Kong is Asia's financial hub and one of the most important financial centers in the world. There are 1,500 multinational corporations choose Hong Kong to set up their regional headquarters for this simple tax system, good infrastructure, a strong legal system providing judicial security for foreign investors and business developers. So according to the World Investment Report 2021, Hong Kong is number three globally in terms of foreign direct investment, and also number three in World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index 2020. And there are over 3,700 startups in Hong Kong as well. So startups are getting a lot of opportunities from various subsidies and partnerships there. The geographic location of Hong Kong is a strong asset as well. It is located pretty much in the center of Asia and at as um, Asia's find uh, a transport hub also. So 60% of the world's population is in Asia and all major cities in Asia are within four to five hours of flight now. Flight from Istanbul, just to let you know, from Istanbul to Hong Kong takes um, 10 hours and we are really not that far away. The city has direct flights to all major cities like London, Barcelona, New York, and LA. While going to New York will take longer, it's 16 hours, but we do have direct flights there. And of course, it is a foodies paradise with a wide variety of Western Asia cuisines. We have the most number of Michelin star restaurants and in Asia, while well, great food is available at an affordable price too. Just another uh, great news for foodies. And for your reference, based on the Big Mac index, it costs half the price to buy a Big Mac in Hong Kong than in Europe. It is also a shopping heaven from street vendors to mega shopping malls with luxurious brands, which with its low taxation, the same luxury goods cost much cheaper in Hong Kong than elsewhere. And most would be the cheapest in Asia as well. One hidden treasure of Hong Kong is the much less known and much less known to non-locals is the city's beautiful rural nature there. 40% of Hong Kong is actually countryside and hiking trails with great views. As it is at the eastern coast of China, there are many features and a long coastline, great for water sports. So Hong Kong is also a city of the future. It is one of the top 10 most smartest uh, cities in 2021, according to Forbes. Initiatives like the Hong Kong Smart City Blueprint Project seek to make sure that uh, to use to make use of innovation and technology to address challenges like city management and quality of life. So Hong Kong citizens in average own 2.8 mobile phones and 94% of the households has broadband coverage. The city is a global leader in 5G coverage as well. Um, uh, if you are someone hooked to the web, 
you'd find Hong Kong adorable for its very fast internet speed here. And finally, maybe to touch on the study in Hong Kong um, uh, topic here, after trying to impress you with the many advantages of studying Hong Kong, now let's talk about education in Hong Kong. The city is slightly over 1,000 square kilometers with a population of 7.5 million people living here. It is in fact a very small city with only eight government funded universities. But these universities, provide world-class education. Five of these uh, government-funded universities are in the world's top 100. So here are the list of their universities that are in the world's top 100, City University of Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, of course, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and the University of Hong Kong. Now, Talking about which, let me go to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and of course, one of the um, eight government funded universities. So are you ready to know more about HKUSD now? Unlike many of our other universities in Asia or even in the world, we are the only one that's probably by the sea. Many students choose to come to Hong Kong simply because, or uh, come to HKUST because of the very beautiful campus here. So this is our campus and the first row of buildings are student residential halls because we say the best location for our students. So every morning when they push open the window, they will have this spectacular sea view in front of them. We try to provide the best environment for students so they will have the space to really expand their mental space there. So this is the campus from another angle shooting from the ocean side. So we have many facilities that's by the ocean the tracks, the swimming pool, and we have our own sports, the water sports center. So come here, you can enjoy many, many sports, great sports facilities and great um, facilities um, as well. So we're always having something new. That's what we say. Uh, we always say about HKUST. We're actually at this moment building new student residential halls, which will be in, in use probably in 2022. So these are the new student residents. And the new short auditorium, which are for festivities and musicals and arts and um, shows uh, will be launched next month. So the short auditorium. So if you're an arts lover, this will be the place for you. And actually we're turning the campus into a smart campus or a living lab for our students. Pretty much all the facilities at, at HKURST are changing to be sustainable ones. So this is the smart campus. Now, let me just play a video. So what it means to be, you know, um, a student at HKURST and what our students think about what HKURST means. Hi, future students. Hello, 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 hello future students. students. Hardworking, sure, opportunity seeking, focus, dedicated, supportive, inventive, open minded, fun, different, crazy talented. I can in four years, I find For me, HKUST is an empowering university. To me, HKUST means adventure. For me, HKUST is not just an education, but it gets me prepared for the real world. To me, HKUST is a home away from home, but also a place to really challenge myself. To me, it is a home where every problem can be solved and every passion pursued. I appreciate HKUST's sea view a lot. I appreciate HKUST's aggressive progression. Opportunities. HKUST's determination towards pushing us to try new things. Make the most out of your time. Think critically and open yourself to the possibility. Take a lot of classes that interest you since you never know what new passion you might discover. And you get to meet everybody when you come here yourself. We're ready, ready to achieve. achieve. We're we HKUST. Well, I 
I hope that you have been enjoying watching the video. So HKUSD do mean a lot of to different students here. So this is again the CV. So we are a very young university. We are just celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. So among the world's uh, young universities, we are number two in the whole world, according to QS top 50 under 50 2021. What about including everyone here for all the world's universities? We are 34th in the whole world, according again, QS World University Ranking 2022. So this is the latest one. So these are our academic rankings, but what about our students? There's a ranking that really talks about our student. It's in the middle, it's the graduate employability ranking. It's a done by it's a it's done by an European agency. So every year the agency would interview headhunters, recruiters, and human resources personnel from multinational corporations and from 20 different countries and over 3,000 of them. So asking them a question, graduates from which university they would consider more employable and they come up with this ranking. Our graduates are ranked 26th in the whole world. So even higher than our academic ranking there. So that means after four years HK USD, you really need not worry about not finding a job which we will explain to you later. So why is that so? Many students would have um, more than just one offer um, before even graduate. So why is HKUSD so academically strong? We will say it's because of the people or our faculties. There are about 700 of them and 74% of them are from outside Hong Kong and all of them have PhD. So academically really strong there. And in terms of journals and articles, scientific reports they've written, they've published, we have the first, number one of the most citations in Asia. So again, a proof of the academic caliber of HKUSD professors. And great minds think alike, and when they gather together, they're really forward-looking and providing a lot of pioneering program provisions at HKUSD. Just two examples here. When you research for colleges or universities, when you think about programs, um, you would probably think about, oh, I'm interested in this particular program. I would like to find out the highest ranking of this particular program. Then I will consider maybe joining or applying. What about creating your own? We do notice that many students would have different interests in different, um, very different areas of uh, disciplines. So we think about what, how about letting them to create their own program. So that's why we have the individualized interdisciplinary major. Like the boy on the background there, his name is Thomas. He graduated three years ago from a program he designed himself. It's the, probably the world's very first Bachelor of Science in Bionics. And it's an interdisciplinary program, of course, because it involves physics, computer engineering, computer science, and um, biotechnology. So it's interdisciplinary, and that's the support we provide our students. Even if you have very out of the box ideas, you will have the support from our faculties and from the university. Now, one and other pioneering program that we provide here, we are the very first one in the world to provide triple uh, degree and joint university program, which is called the World Bachelor of Business. We partner with the University of Southern California, that's in the US, and University of Bocconi in Milan, Italy, to provide this program here. And it's the world's very first such a program. So you, we're always having something new is what I'm trying to say. And we try to provide um, a very international community or a campus for a student. And we do have the most international campus in Hong Kong. Students are from more than 80 nationalities. So it's really an international campus. And we do try to provide the most comprehensive exchange program for our students. We are partner, exchange partner with over 240 world um, internationally top institutions and colleges and universities from 37 destinations. So 
close to half of our students would have the chance to go on one full semester of exchange during their four year study at HKUST. So again, for those who do not have exchanges, basically because they do not choose to go on exchange. And one more advantage of uh, joining this exchange program HKUST is we, our 240 partners, many of them are top university in the whole world. And if you are really familiar with the course of to, uh, education at this more conventional destination, you will know the tuition fees differences there. But during the semester, exchange semester, you'll be paying HKUST tuition fee for your exchange semester. So again, you will be at the world's top university but paying a Hong Kong price there. So supportive network and one of the reasons making our students so employable in the whole world is we try to provide as many internship opportunities for our students as possible. And in fact, over 80% of our students would have internship experience before they graduate and making them so employable. And as I mentioned, many students would have more than just one job offer before, even before they graduate. And six months upon graduation, close to 100% of them will be employed. So that's the figure there, not to worry about not finding a job here. And there are many other opportunities, of course, um, case competitions, community services, and we are a research university. So if you're really into scientific research, you will have the Euro program, which is Asia's very first undergraduate research opportunities program for you to join the research teams of our faculties early on. So many, many opportunities and to help you to achieve what you wish to achieve here. We try to let the student to explore their full potential by providing all the opportunities for them to explore, explore their own um, interest and potential there. So sky is the limit. And at HKUST, you can really achieve what you wish to achieve. Now, very quickly, let me go over to the mission information part. We do provide very flexible curriculum. Again, when you apply for college or university, you probably need to fix on the program or two and uh, really decide on the major. But at HKUST, you do not need to do so. I will tell you how it works later. We are a research university, not a comprehensive one. So we do not have the more um, common ones like medical school, like art, like architecture or psychology. We do not have those. We do not have law school. We have four schools that science, engineering, business and management, humanities and social science. So there are four schools and four major areas and we are very good at them. And there's of course the interdisciplinary programs office because a quarter of our 49 plus majors are cross-disciplinary or joint school majors. And there are 24 minors. So what's, well, we are always having something new and other new initiative here. So there are majors and there are minors, and we created what we call an extended major since 2020. So you can have your first major then with an extended major in artificial intelligence or digital media and creative arts, all very trending um, in future. Uh, major programs or discipline and areas there. So you can have science plus artificial intelligence or engineering plus artificial intelligence, and you can have a business major plus digital media and creative arts. So many, many combinations here. And we are having one application choice that's brand new here. That's the very first spectrum of science in sustainable and green finance. So again, a very trending one. So green finance and sustainability here, jointly offered by another joint school program by the business school and the division of environment and sustainability. And like I mentioned earlier, a quarter of our major programs are in fact cross-disciplinary ones and interdisciplinary or joint school majors because we do see the needs. Students have multiple, multiple or very diverse interests and their society and even the world are really needing um, personnel with 
multi-disciplinary uh, knowledges. So all these cross-disciplinary majors are preparing our students for the future society. And alternative pathways, we nowadays there are more universities that partner together to provide joint university program. Of course, we were the first one in the world to provide to provide one. That's the world training business, but they're not the only joint university program. We also partner with the University of Aseda in Japan to provide a uh, three plus two altogether five years program. When you graduate, you will have a Bachelor of Science which is provided by HKUST and a Bachelor of Arts or Master, um, uh, or must be a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, Economics or Global Political Economics. So five years and two degrees. And that's not the only dual degree, we have our own. So this one, when you graduate, you will have one Bachelor of Science um, major or program and certificate, and a Master of Science in Financial Technology, that's FinTech. So the first one will be risk management, this bachelor degree, and a, a master degree in FinTech as well. So five-year degree program, new pathway. Now, when we comes to the flexibility part, so let me explain that to you in a little bit more detail. So we have 49 majors, but when you apply to HKUSD, the application choices are 20 something there. So why is this so? Why there are not 49 application choices? It's because many of the, um, the schools would have their, what we call the school-based application choice. So you do not apply directly to a major program, but you apply to the school. For example, if you are interested in chemical engineering or computer science or computer engineering, you do not apply to this particular major, you apply to engineering, which is a school-based application choice. And if you are interested in artificial intelligence, which I mentioned just earlier, is an extended major, you can choose to have engineering plus extended major in AI. So it's again, a school-based application choice. For the science school, they have similar arrangements. So the, there is the science group A, which is math and physics, and science group B, which will, will be uh, biology and chemistry. So these are the school-based application choices for science and engineering. For the business school, they do have school-based application choice, which is, is business and management, but they also have direct program um, application choices. If you're interested in any of the business school majors or programs like finance, economics, quantitative finance or accounting, you can directly apply. But if, if you do not want to fix on a single major, you can apply for the school-based choice. So there are two types, the school-based, you just apply to the school and the program-based, which are you directly apply for the program. So you can choose which, pro, which choice you um, uh, want to have now. But whatever application choice that got you admitted to HKUSD, the first year you will be doing University Common Core, which are general education courses, and the school foundation or pre-major courses provided by the school you are admitted to. Even if you are admitted to a single major uh, program, say for example, you are admitted to the accounting major, you will not be doing accounting studies in the first year, you will be doing school foundation of the business school. Because we would like our students to spend a full year to really explore and really find out what each major is all about. So they, when they choose their major, at the end of the first year, they can make a really informed decision. And when you join the major selection exercise at the end of the first year, you can choose not just the programs provided by your own school, but also the joint school majors, interdisciplinary majors. So there are more than just the majors provided by your own school. Very flexible there. Even if you wish to change, say for example, you are admitted to their accounting program, but the first year you'll be just exploring around different major programs. And if you decide after a year's exploration, you like to change, you can change during the major selection exercise. So even if you wish to um, get a double or dual 
the second major from another school. Say you have an engineering major, but you like to have a second major from the business school, you have the freedom to do so as well. So just like I said, it's very flexible curriculum. So scholarship, um, good news. We have country specific scholarship from students from Turkey. So if you are a Turkish citizen, you are entitled to this um, scholarship for Turkish students. We started to provide this scholarship since last year and we will continue to provide this scholarship uh, in the coming year. So you do not need to apply. You will be automatically considered when you apply for admission to HKUST. If you uh, award it, it can be either full or half renewable during normal duration, which is usually four years. So renewable scholarship, either full or half. We do have new scholarship for non-academic achievement. So this is what we call the Beyond Academic Admission Scholarship, which you do need to apply. It really covers all the areas that's pretty much not on academic. So from leadership, sustainability, entrepreneurship, creativeness, sports, esports, and any achievement that you consider um, relevant, you can apply for this uh, BAAS scholarship. And if you are awarded, you will get 50,000 Hong Kong dollars. It's one of, this one you do need to apply. And we do have standard scholarship scheme for IB students. So if you have a score 40 or above, you will receive some kind of scholarship. And other than the IB scholarship, you would like to ask, uh, what about other qualifications? Um, all the students who apply for admission will be automatically considered for admissions scholarship. You do not need to apply separately. And when you receive the offer, admission offer, you will together receive the scholarship offer as well. So you can consider whether you would like to accept the offer together with the scholarship offerings. So for your consideration there. If you ever join any of the Olympia competitions and won a medal, let us know. There's a standard scheme there as well. And like I mentioned at the very beginning, so study in Hong Kong is really value for money. So it's not just HKUST. For the tuition fee, it's uh, annually uh, 140,000 Hong Kong dollars. That's about 18,000 US a year. So for all the eight government funded universities, their tuition fee will be more or less similar. That's about 18 to 19,000 US dollars a year. So what about including um, living expenses and accommodation? So it will be between about 20, uh, 200, uh, never mind, just USD, the US dollars, 26,000 US to 27,000 US dollars a year. So it's pretty much half of those from the usual destinations like UK or US, right? So application procedure and for other Hong Kong universities it will be more or less similar. The timeline is very similar here. Application would already started like HKUST or they will, yeah, it will started to receive applications since late September. And I am uh, pretty sure all the other universities have already started as receiving applications. For HKUSD, there's the early birth deadline, which falls on the 19th of November. So if you apply by the early birth, um, you will guarantee will guarantee to uh, let you know the offer decision by from mid-December onwards. And just a tip, if you apply earlier, it's a higher chance for you to receive scholarship there. We do have the main round there. The main round uh, ends on the 14th of January next year. And if you apply by main round, you will hear from us from late January onwards. For the past two years, we have what we call the um, rolling basis admissions. So after the main round, you, we will still receive application. So it depends on whether there are uh, spare places left. So you may also consider, but we always encourage students to apply early. So now requirements. Um, if you are using American pattern, we do expect you to have SAT 1290 or ACT plus writing with composite score minimum 27 plus three AP subjects. 
plus three AP subjects. So SAT 1290 or ACT plus writing 27 plus three AP subjects. And if you're using IB, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the IB diploma. So some reference score. Um, this is the mid 50 score range for 2021. So these are really the students um, using IB to apply to HKUSD and who got admitted their reference score. Of course, there are students with um, a lower score and higher score got admitted as well. So that's why we call it the mid 50 score range. For students using IB, the mid 50 score range is 37 to 42. And for students using SAT, it's 1,420 to 1,490. Not sure whether we have a GCA level student here. It's um, 1A star to 2A to 3A stars. We do accept the Turkish uh, national uh, or high school diploma listed here. And the reference score for students using Turkish uh, qualification to apply to HKUSD is overall average of 75 or above on the 100 point scale there. We use English as the teaching medium, so you can either use TOEFL or IELTS or IB or British Patent System uh, English test to fulfill that. So just one of them will do. You can scan the QR code and find out the details. And make sure you check the subject requirements because there are schools or programs that, that they have specific subjects there. For example, if you are trying to apply for the engineering school, we expect you to have senior level math and one of the blue dots that will be if you can buy computer studies or statistics. If you're trying to apply for science group A, you must have either um, math or physics. If you're trying to apply for science group B, you must have either biology or chemistry. So make sure you check the requirement there. Most students would not need to be in the field to get admitted. Other than the programs listed here, there are six programs that would require in the field where in the field is a mandatory. All the other schools or majors do not require in the field. So only selected students will be invited for in the field. So do not worry if you're not invited for an interview because many students got admitted to HKUSD without an interview. We are on all social media platforms and we are on Unibuddy as well. So if you'd like to engage with our 300 student ambassadors, you can go to this web link there and choose a student from Turkey and chat with him or her and let, uh, let her or him or her tell you more about uh, Live HK USD. Social media, we're on YouTube, Facebook, IG, Snapchat, Twitter. So just search HKUSD admission then and follow us there. And of course, our eBushore, our website, um, if you'd like to receive update from us, please fill out the form there. Okay. That's HKUSD and study in Hong Kong. <laughs> Hope I've not bored you. <laughs> Thank you. No, we still have a, a lot of people with us, which is excellent. So I'm assuming they might want to ask a couple questions. And if you don't wish to ask it in English, Türkçe sorabilirsiniz, tercih edersiniz. Selim uh, would like to ask a question. Go ahead, Selim. Hello. Uh, thanks for the great, uh, great presentation. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I came in a little late. Uh, maybe I missed it, but uh, I, I wanted to ask if... Uh, if we were going to make our applications from Common App, or would we have to do it directly from like email or something else? Um, you have to apply for each university separately. So there's no Common App like um, in the US. Um, so each university will have their own application portal. So. Good question. Um, All right, thanks. So Tunga, do you wanna go ahead? You look like you have a question. Yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm going to ask about the travel uh, expenses. So is there any uh, scholarship or any kind of uh, help that your university provides for students traveling uh, with the plane uh, long distances uh, or any like school related travels for research? Is there any program or support like that? Um, uh, we have a uh, scholarship that cover living expenses. So there's not a direct uh, scholarship that's called travel uh, scholarship there, but we do have what we call the exchange scholarship as well. So for scholarship that uh, providing 
full tuition plus living expenses that will be 55,000 Hong Kong dollars. So approximately maybe 65, um, 6,500 US that would pretty much cover the travel expenses there. And then for exchange scholarship, so it varies from 5,000 Hong Kong to even 40,000 Hong Kong dollars for the exchange semester. So there are many scholarships you can apply as a current student. There's not a particular exchange that's uh, a scholarship that's called travel expenses though. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I think Salem has another question. Go ahead, Salem. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, well, uh, of course, scholarships are like quite important for us to come to Hong Kong and all that. So, uh, well, let's say that I have uh, let's say 41 points from IV. Do you think it would be beneficial for me to just uh, take an SAT and like get a point between like three, 1300 and let's say 1400 and would I, would I have a better chance to be considered for a scholarship? First of all, you are a Turkish citizen, I would assume. So you will be automatically considered for the scholarship for Turkish citizen um, there. And there's the standard IV scheme. So if you score 40 or above, you will have some kind of scholarship. We do not have a specific scholarship for SAT or AP there, but then, like I mentioned, everybody will be considered for admission scholarship automatically. And when you're saying, will that be a benefit or advantage if you have an extra um, curriculum or qualification? First, you have to choose your major qualification. So either you choose IB or you choose um, the American pattern, that would be your major qualification for application. And then all the other will be supplementary. Whether that will be beneficial to your application, it really depends on the score. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, mid 50 score range for SAT is 1420 to 1490. So if 1300 may not be a very beneficial one there. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good question. Eileen, please go ahead. Um, first of all, thank you for the presentation. And my question is that uh, what kind of like, no, like what's the opportunities of like research in the field of physics in your university? First of all, um, our science school is very strong. We have a physics department, of course, and uh, we do, I'm not sure whether you uh, pay attention to this, so made this program that's called Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, which is Asia's very first similar program. So what happens is every year, our um, faculties, there are 700 faculties, but over a hundred of them would really launch like 300 different research projects to this Europe program and let our students even starting from year one, you can choose any of the uh, 300 research projects led by the faculties and to join their research team and study or learn or do research together following the uh, supervisor or the professor. So that's the Euro program with over 300 different research projects and I'm pretty sure there are physics involved because science school is a one major um, the faculty or school that has a lot of research project going on there. So we are a research university and for undergraduate students, we do provide, I'm pretty sure the highest number of research opportunities for students in Hong Kong, if not in Asia. Um, perhaps I can piggyback with a question on Ivan's because uh, her question made me think of the following, you know, when we apply to the United States, um, we typically tell our students be, to be exceptionally well prepared with their resume and extra, you know, a holistic, preparing for holistic admissions and in, as opposed to in Europe where the focus is more on academics. Where do you think Hong Kong is, your, your institution is in that spectrum? Um, we really require students, well, we are the only, we specifically require students to write as a personal statement that you do not need to be very space specific because we have two application choices. Um, you may be applying for the business school and you may be applying for the engineering school together at the same time. So um, you really need not to be very specific, but uh, we will expect you to tell us your genuine story, what you have been doing for the past year, what your interest is, um, what makes you consider Hong Kong, what makes you consider this particular school or program and what you aspire to be. So there's no definite format there and there's no definite number of words that you have to write. 
And if you have done any relevant research, of course, mention it because that would be relevant to your application. And I'm pretty sure the faculties would like to know if you are particularly interested in scientific research, then, oh, by the way, we do have what we call an international research enrichment. It's a program or a major that you can directly apply. So if you're really into scientific research, the IRE program is provided by the science school. You do not need to fix on a particular area. Even if you're interested in physics, you just apply for the IRE program, then you will have really extra opportunities to take part in scientific research. It's called international research enrichment. Thank you. That's very, very helpful. Yeah. There were some excellent questions here. Okay, Sidim has another one, but I'm gonna actually call on, who's the other person? And then I'll come back to Sidim, if that's okay. Who's the other person, guys? Uh, Hilal Peri, can you go ahead with your question, please, Hilal? Um, thank you. Um, I wanna be a surgeon and I wanna ask, um, can you uh, tell us a little bit of your medicine facility and MBBS? First of all, uh, Hong Kong does not have, a, uh, HKUSC does not have a medical school. So if you're talking about medicine facilities, I assume you're talking about the clinics, right? So what um, medical uh, support that, or service that we provide our students. We have a clinic, um, a, a general position of clinic at, uh, on our campus and a dental clinic on campus as well. And we have our counseling and wellness center for students as well. So, and we have a hospital, public hospital, just 10 minutes away, 10 minutes right away from their campus. So it's pretty convenient and direct. Thank you. So Selim, get, let's get back to your question. All right, thank you. Uh, I was going to ask a question about accommodation. Like, does the University of Hong Kong has its own uh, student accommodations? Yes, each university will have uh, student residential halls, but the policy would be a little bit uh, different um, depending on the institution you're trying to apply to. So HKUST will provide two years guaranteed um, university provided accommodation for non-Hong Kong students. So you're pretty sure insured of two years university provided residence um, by HKUSD. And for year three and year four, we have what we call a, well, um, nickname lucky draw system going on here. As a non-Hong Kong student, you will have some more tickets than the local Hong Kong students. And all of you will have the, all those tickets into the lucky draw system, then you will have higher chance of getting university provided accommodation. But that said, um, some students, some non Hong Kong students will get accommodation in year three and year four, some may not. And if you join more student societies, um, there may be bonus tickets that you can get. So the more tickets, the higher the chance. Right, and for other you. yeah, for other universities, some will provide one year residence only, and some may have three years. So it uh, it's a bit different. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions? Jump. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Please jump in. Uh, uh, thank you for your keynote. First, uh, I wanted to ask a question about uh, actually. Um, entrepreneurship program in uh, HKUST. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in Turkey, I have a company, uh, a startup actually, uh, in a startup hub. Uh, but if I uh, join the HKUST, uh, uh, can it uh, support my startup? Maybe I can, uh, can I relocate my uh, company to Hong Kong and maybe, uh, I have a few uh, funds for that, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I just ask. Okay. We are a big supporter of entrepreneurship. Actually, we are the first one in Hong Kong to set up an entrepreneurship center by the university. We're the first one in Hong Kong to do so. And we do support our student, alum, and faculty to be entrepreneurs. So the entrepreneurship center, first of all, supports students to be, you know, startup um, and owners and entrepreneurs. And we have a minor program that's called the entrepreneurship program. It's a minor program. That should tell you how much we 
to support entrepreneurship. And we have a master degree in entrepreneurship as well. So it, uh, we are really a big supporter of entrepreneurship. But then what you will get from the HKUSD, first, uh, I would just like to give you an example. We have a year two student who just won the Sino HKUSD entrepreneurship $1 million campaign. And they have startup money of 500 Hong Kong dollars to really fund their startup. And they have this idea that's using um, bread, bread that's not used and to make beer and they call it Bria. So it's very fun. And they are, because of the entrepreneurship center support, they can really reach out to the local restaurant chains and sell their products. So you will have all kinds of support. If you have your own company and you like to have um, some funding or monetary funding, you can join the uh, competition first, and you can directly really discuss with the entrepreneurship center and see what kind of support they can give you. For those who do not have a startup already, uh, there are workshops and we invite industry people to really come to HKUSC to give um, sample lectures or um, and networking opportunities and really talk with our students and um, faculties and really help them. Um, we are a research university, so by nature, we do have many, many um, products, research products. So we would like them to be really applicable to the society. That's why we are a big supporter of entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, good question. Um, does it, <clears throat> if Jaren has a question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you give information about the architecture programs application process, if there is an architecture program available in your university? We do not. <laughs> <laughs> well, the University of Hong Kong has the architecture department, so you may consider applying to the University of Hong Kong. Okay, good. Um, Sinem has another one. Yes, another one. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry for asking too many questions. No problem. But, well, like, as I've seen from, let's say, from the, let's say, news from, like, past year, like there, there, there's been many riots going on in Hong Kong, I believe. And like, how would you describe uh, the environment for a student? Like, would it be safe for a student to like choose Hong Kong? Well, um, since COVID, it's been really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was 2019, and it happened for about a couple of months, and it all quieted down. So it's really safe, even during their. Um, those months, the campus HKUSD is pretty safe because you can just see from my virtual background and if you really were, you know, at the very beginning, I've been showing our campus, we're not in the city center, we're far away from what, you know, those um, unrest uh, rest was happening. So um, now the campus security is tightened and everybody who go in the campus need to have an ID card or pre-register to get in. So it's very safe at HKUSD campus, even during those times. And now it's even safer, of course. So, and Hong Kong itself is very safe because nobody can move around that easily as compared before. I just wanted Thank to- Thank you, just one- Oh, just, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to add here, uh, one of my students at a, um, another institution, but you know, another good institution in Hong Kong, was so happy we were talking about this before everybody joined he actually preferred to stay there this summer because he was much happier there with the environment than his native Ankara just I'm just sharing it with you yeah thanks no. yeah I also mentioned well even before everybody joined that um we have the lowest or even no COVID case local COVID case for 40 something days already so we are considered the safest uh, city or location in on earth probably that's yeah. great just one one more another question and i'm like off <laughs> Sorry. like no uh, like how, how would you describe the weather condition in hong kong like the weather yeah the well, weather we are humid we are humid i think we're similar to istanbul in a way we're not um that dry mm -hmm. we're humid but the temperature will uh, even during what we call winter but it's not winter at all so 
10 degrees Celsius are considered cold here in Hong Kong. So uh, normally it will be 20 something degrees Celsius. And even during the summer, it will be around 30 to 33 degrees Celsius during the hottest month. So humid, but then humidity will be an issue for you. Maybe. <laughs> Questions on things you don't you don't have to you can simply look up on Google. Eileen may have a good one. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, me, but I, I'll just ask it. Like, can a person with uh, severe seafood al allergies uh, survive in there? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, um, I, if you are a vegetarian, um, we have vegetarian restaurant on campus and um, we have Pala food uh, chain on campus as well. It's not that um, seafood is not provided in every restaurant, I would say, and you can really pick the right food. So no need to worry. Okay, thanks. Okay, it's quite late for us, Arian. So if we're done with academic questions, um, we Don't worry, really. We can, uh, I can stay longer. <laughs> Right. More Several of you in very pertinent fields, you're, um, Wuchen, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm a parent, basically. My question is, um, about, yeah, it's, you're coming in around, where the graduates are, I don't know if you want to write it, is, is else paused i'm here i'm not paused yeah so you may want to uh, write it in chat and we'll okay will it be something about graduates or no hong kong students graduate opportunity we'll find out from her or um, ask her to just put it on the chat if we can address it uh is there another one in the interim until she can do that don't see other questions just that well i can talk about it um, i even if i assume that question will be something about graduates um opportunities for non hong kong student who graduate from any of the government funded university you can have unconditional stay in hong kong for 12 more months so you can use that 12 more months to find a job do an internship um do whatever you like to do so it's unconditional so if you have four years in uh, during graduation and one year um, stay, and then you find a job and work two more years, then you will be in Hong Kong for seven years. That will give you, then you'll be eligible for permanent residence there. So that one of the reason making many students would choose to stay in Hong Kong after graduation. First, it's because of the policy. Second, because we are really a high paying um, society here. So their salary are much, much higher than elsewhere in Asia. So one of the major reasons students would graduate, non-local graduate would choose to stay in Hong Kong to work. Thank you. That's very interesting. That's one of the first questions I get asked as a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Some of you are looking at like computer science and similar fields. Those are perfect at this institution. So jump in if you've got one. We've got our authority. Yeah, with yeah our engineering program in general are in the world's top 20s. So really highly ranked there. Which no issues. Did we address your, um, <clears throat> your question? We were kind of guessing. We heard part of it. So just let I us just heard part of it. If you can repeat, if you don't mind, I'll really appreciate. I'm just in another room in the uh, in the house, so I would appreciate if you could repeat, please. Just heard Was part that, of it. What, what, what's your question again? I'm not sure. I guess it right. Hear it. Right. Okay. So I'm asking about where the graduates are working, like when they graduate from your school, uh, being local or non-local. Where do you, where do they prefer to work, or where who? Um, are they preferred by, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean uh, yeah. 
Uh, I would just say saying, well, uh, for the other audience, please uh, forgive me, I, I have to repeat a little bit. So uh, we have a policy by the Hong Kong government that uh, immigration policy, all non-Hong Kong students who graduated from one any of the government funded universities can have 12 more months of con unconditional stay in Hong Kong. So 80%, at least from the Hong Kong or from HKUSD, the non-Hong Kong graduates will stay in Hong Kong after graduation to find a job there. First of all, because of the very uh, beneficial policy there, they don't need to do anything. They can stay there for 12 more months. And second, because the society itself, it's really high paying. Um, we do pay very high salary there. So com as compared to other Asian cities, so it's they will have much higher salary than come going back to their home uh, city to work in Hong Kong. And um, not just in Hong Kong, our students are sought after globally so they can choose to work in Hong Kong or they can choose to work uh, elsewhere. But if you choose to work in Hong Kong, you have already studied four years. You have one year of an additional stay. If you find a job and work two more years, and altogether seven years will make you eligible to apply for permanent residence in Hong Kong. And it's a very low, low tax society. So again, low tax, high salary. So many really, you know, will choose to stay in Hong Kong. And if I understood, I just want to repeat what I understood. So it's 12 more months for the yes. non-local, like international person to stay in Hong Kong? Yes. And then if you're working there, that's two more years, you're allowed to stay in Hong Kong without any further condition? Yeah, they can right. apply for permanent residence, yes. All right, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, both to Yeshima and to Zoria, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good question, that was, that's an important one. Um, okay, any, any more guys? Meli, Eran? I know you guys, if you've got... You might have questions, no? Eda? Okay. Okay, Zorin, it looks like that's it for our questions. I think this has been most informative. We're so lucky to have you. And you've been so gracious joining us so late in the evening. And it's all right. We, we really appreciate it. And I think I definitely thought I know, knew the university. I certainly learned a lot on top of that. Um, but we'll continue to put it on the lists, and I hope the students here, just indicated by the good questions we got this evening, are absolutely thinking about the salient points of an education. Yeah. Uh, and please, I'd just like to repeat, we do have Turkish uh, scholarship for Turkish students, so please do apply. You have really high chance to get a scholarship there. One of the world's best universities, essentially, so, yeah. And very low tuition fee and high scholarship. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So with that, I'll, I'll conclude. Um, and uh, we- Well, thank you, Yasin, really. Pleasure to have you and we appreciate all the participants as well. Thank you very much. Look forward to meeting you on campus, students and parents and teachers. Okay right. then. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye.